just to deliberately conceal rapidly rising costs so that they'd make sure the government kept pumping the billions in. And if they did, well, that would be a pretty serious charge. Now, I'm joined here in the studio by Andrew Bruce, former head of planning and performers at HS2. Well, Andrew, you were there from 2015 to 2016 yes. <laughs> in a senior position. And as I understand it, from what I've read and what I've seen, you were specifically involved uh, with the part of the project that was repossessing houses up and down the line. Correct. So just tell us your story, what you saw. Okay. When I got to HS2, my job description was to buy all the land within a budget of £2.8 billion. Right. So that was very specific. And you had experience in doing this in previous jobs before? I had, yes. I'm, I'm a chartered civil engineer. Yep. I've, I've done a lot of properties. So you've got £2.8 billion to spend, yes. buying up properties up and down the line. Yes. And I was given three key tasks. The first, I had to identify how many properties. There was 11,420 yep. of them. It was very clear. I had to know when we were going to buy those properties. Also very clear, because construction told me exactly when they wanted those properties. What was less clear was how much those properties were going to be valued at, what the cost was. Now, I was given the official HS2 budget. It was 2.8 billion. It was in my job description. It, it was part of the... Um, uh, you know, everybody knew what, what, what the value was. But when I started looking at the figures very quickly, within my first week, I realised that there was a very large fundamental problem with that estimate. It was wrong, very clearly wrong. It was wrong because the compensation that was paid as a result of the compulsory purchase was more than 2.8 billion. Not only that, we knew that in 2014, three years before HS2 actually got permission through Parliament to proceed, we already knew that the budget was two billion pounds we needed £2 billion more than the actual budget. So you were employed by HS2, well paid, I'm sure, in a senior role with a big job to do on an entirely false premise. Exactly. And it, it, it became a, a real problem very quickly um, for two reasons. Probably the, the biggest reason that I was most upset about was we were taking people's property from them, but we didn't have the money to pay. So the team that I was with was deliberately undervaluing their properties because we didn't actually have the funds to pay them properly for what their properties were worth. And I felt that was very wrong. Mm. And I felt that I could do something about that from the inside. If I showed HS2 actually how much money we really needed and, in fact, how much money HS2... Had, they, they commissioned estimates um, of very experienced property surveyors who'd already told HS2 it wasn't 2.8 billion, it was at least 2 billion pounds. But more like 4.8 billion. 4.8 billion was, was, was the figure I had. So you run into this problem. You've been given a job on a false premise, you haven't got the money to pay people, some poor house owners are getting really badly done with the system. Yes. But does this facade continue? Yes. So what I decided to do from the inside was we commissioned a report from Deloitte. Um, it took about three months to produce this, mm. and that report was going to be a programme plan. We started with zero people, mm. zero capability, zero capacity, and in a fairly short period of time, we, we had to take on the largest land compulsory acquisition since the Second World War. Mm. We're actually going to try and take on 70 square kilometres of land. It's, it's, it's a huge mm. amount of land for HS2. Mm. And, and for that, I, I um, realised that I had to show HS2 that the 2.8 billion was wrong mm -hmm. and, in fact, used their own figures. It wasn't figures that I made up, it was HS2's own figures to ask for that budget to be raised so we could actually yep. pay people properly. And what happened? So what happened was... A, a, we, we, we wrote a report, um, Deloitte wrote a report. It, was, it, 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 it cost millions of pounds to write this report. It took months to do. We had some very serious help. When that report was completed and we wanted to submit that and use it to, to create the programme and, and, and the, the projects yeah. to move it forward, a new property director came in. And his first task was to tell me, Andrew, take all these reports, shred them, put them in the shredding bin, destroy them. And I said, but this is three months worth of work. This is our plan to move forward. This is, this is to show how much money we really need, how we're going to do this properly, honestly, 
um, to the taxpayer, and he says, shred it. We had to shred it. He then asked me to write a brand new program, but I had to write it myself in four days. We just spent millions of pounds yeah, in yeah, three months yeah. shredding it. Well, that is any public money, I suppose. But... Now, <laughs> I'd been involved all the way through with the Deloitte's. Yeah, yeah. It had my name on it. I'd signed it off. When I wrote my report, my director was then furious because I'd made reference to the, the, what he called the Deloitte report. Mm -hmm. um, they had eight swim lanes. I had eight swim lanes. They had 13 projects. I had 13. It, it made me rewrite it. Um, but eventually that got through. And I thought I was making progress. When I thought I was making progress, we then put it in front of the Department for Transport. Um, some very senior people um, from the Department for Transport were there and other senior executives. And I managed in February of 2016 to show them, firstly, the, the 2.8 billion um, um, budget we had. The first, the first problem was it was 1.2 billion in error. But also, there was things like we were um, um, uh, one third of the properties had accidentally been valued at zero, which was in error. One third of the properties had been valued at under one thousand pounds, and they, they, these were big properties. This is why we're two billion out, basically. In error, yes. And so I was adding on yeah. the, the additions. Yeah. So what happens in the end, Andrew? Do they kick you out? So in the end, the, 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 the day that I had to formally submit this report, um, the, it was, it was the, the, the 6th of April. Um, I'd set up the room. The Department for Transport was coming in. I was about to put it in. I was called into a side room. Security was there. I was escorted out the building, with, with, really without explanation. And a week later, I got a, a letter saying that I was dismissed. Andrew, if this happened in your sector, mm -hmm. if your sector of HS2 was willfully and deliberately, and, and the government and the public were misled as to what the heads the costs keep escalating, what do you think should happen to these HS2 directors? I think what they did was criminal. You know, I, I, I think it was fraudulent. It was, it was a fraud against the British public. Um, well, I, I, I think the police need to get involved. And I, Andrew, I, I, I think these people should... Andrew help. Bruce, they are very strong words. Mm. And thank you for coming in and delivering them. Now, we do have a response, which won't surprise you. HS2 Limited have said, in the course of updating estimates on land and property, costs have increased. And we have been completely transparent about this process. It said no order was given to destroy the Deloitte report, and it was not shredded. It said electronic copies were retained. Department for Transport said the government and its public bodies take such claims seriously. They will ensure they are thoroughly investigated. So there you are. The reports weren't shredded, Andrew. I shredded them personally myself. There you are. I shred them. There you are. Well, Jacob rees mogg has, has been sitting in with me listening to all of this. Uh, I mean, it's really pretty shocking what Andrew Bruce is saying. It is, isn't it? And the more Shocking. one hears about HS2, the worse it sounds. The huge waste of public money, the carelessness about it from the outset of the project and the failure to tell ministers or parliament what was really happening. Well, I think the problem here with what Andrew Bruce is saying is that it's not carelessness. It's actually willfully. It becomes willful, yes, isn't it? Yes, that they make yes. mistakes. It may start off with money, but it becomes And willful. then they become yeah. um, willfully obstructive and fire people who are whistleblowing. Uh, and that seems to have happened. The, the Sunday Times had a detailed report. No, 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 about no, the weekend. Weird. I was saying earlier, the Sunday Times brought together a lot of strands of yeah, stories yeah. that were already out there, and it was actually very compelling. Well, I have to say, you know, I, I hope very much that, um, that Andrew Bruce is right and that we do get these people to actually have to stand up in court and defend what they did. It's our money, for goodness it's sake. It's our money, that's right. Which Bonkers. has been frittered away. You're like Nat West, a lot of that's our money too. It, it <laughs> is <laughs> They love you, don't they? Oh, I mean, that is it, extraordinary. It's vile, isn't it? Uh, well, I hope whoever it is who said that you should... Um, uh, have something thrown at you, uh, yoghurt is fired. Well, and I think that's absolutely yeah, yeah. outrageous. Well, and, you, you know, it's fair enough not to like politicians. It's fair yeah. enough to shout at them. But, but throwing substances at them yeah. is just monstrous. There's more to come. There's more to oh come on that, folks. You wait. Jacob, very quickly, what have you got We're going to be following on from you. ECH.